Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. From the 63rd annual O'Reilly Auto Parts Autorama at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Welcome to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Coming up, we're going to talk to uh, some of the participants in today's show. We're going to talk to Jim Tilley right out of the box here with his 65 Coronet Mr. Norm car. Uh, later on, we're going to have uh, Jeff have a, ser- uh, a segment on the mysterious Shade Tree Mechanic. Yeah. Conrad has this week's car clinic. What's in the car clinic today? Well, since we're celebrating Mr. Norm um, and we were just talking about other dealer built dealers building supercars of the 60s and 70s, thought I'd talk a little bit about a few of the others as oh, well. Oh, good. That's great. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And then, uh, well, we're going to have the usual bunch of boys here talking car stuff. Bunch of boys. Bunch of boys. That's exactly right. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. King Conrad DeLong to my left today. We need more Jeff Zekin over here. Chief Engineer and Bottle Washer David Mm. Ainsley. I'm Don Armstrong. (laughs) Glad that you could join us on this Saturday. There's not a soul here. Well, there's our souls. <laughs> our souls well, there are right. souls, yes. Uh, the, some of the cleanup people are here getting ready for today's show that opens in two hours, by the way. Uh, we'll have Larry way on. He's going to talk about, you know, ticket prices and all the good stuff that he's got going on here at the show today. Between it's airport packed, runs. It's a packed house uh, as far as uh, actual displays are concerned. Matter of fact, we've got a motorcycle squeezed in over here to the right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's, there's lots of stuff here to see and do at uh, this year's 63rd Autorama. And we invite you to come on down. If you can't, we're going to give you kind of a little mini tour of our own here around in the uh, center of George R. Brown Convention Center. And by the way, speaking of center, we really are kind of smack dab in the center of uh, the George R. Brown yeah, here. right in the middle of the Hall C, so it's literally in the middle. Yeah, and uh, Tremec Transmissions is right there, and they've got a sign that you can see wherever you are inside the George R. Brown, and we're right here by it, as you can see. Stepped right in the middle of In the of it. In Wheel Time Car Talk booth. Speaking of that, in the booth with us this morning is uh, Jim Tilly 65 Coronet 500, the Mr. Norm car. Uh, Jim, you're a Louisiana boy. Yes, sir. How, how did you know Mike Mike Mars? How, how did you? I'm sorry to, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but uh, how how did you and Mike uh, get together? How do you? Know My son other? Matt lives in Nederland. Really? And so that's pretty close to Mike. Oh my God! So he's got some stories do about him. Do you tell no. people this? Do you <laughs> no. tell people this? They keep it a secret. <laughs> well, so do we. <laughs> I think they met somewhere at a football game or something, and they were talking about cars and uh, drink, yeah. drinking a beer, yeah, a brown yeah. water, yeah, yeah. So uh, he's shown a picture of the cornet to, to Michael, and uh, you know he talked about I need to call him and do a podcast with you guys yeah. there, which I bummed there. <laughs> So, and then Michael, of course, he asked to, to be a host, a uh, guest on y'all's show here. So Yeah, uh, well, sense. there's that. But Thank I think you. more importantly, when Mars said, we were looking for a car to bring in. We always try to get a, a really cool car every year to bring here. Uh, we've had some really nice cars, there's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. And when he told me about that, I said, are you kidding me? He can bring it over here? He said, yeah. Well, there's no question. Let's have it. Show the, the car to Houston. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. this car's never been shown here. No. Have you ever brought it over here for anything? No. Never. This is the first time here. Okay. How, okay, let's start from the very beginning, and let's tell people a little brief history of Mr. Norm and who Mr. Norm is. Okay. Mr. Norm, whenever he was a teenager, him and his brother got into selling cars, yes. used cars from their, their own home. So they saw where they made good sales so hey let's go into the business so i think they rented a building and they started selling used cars and then from there they went into new car productions so it's grown quite a bit and of course during this time uh drag racing has gotten pretty popular right in the mid 60s yes so a lot of the big three were pushing cars out there performance cars so they said let's get in on this one 
So I think they even had a shop car that they raced, local drag strip. I'm, I'm not real sure on that. But I've heard that. They did do some drag racing, right. though. Mm-hmm. It's a tax write-off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Advertisement at the track. It was it say, win on Sunday, sell on Monday type deal. Uh, but anyhow, uh, they seen a good market there for that. Uh, one of their things that they was known for, they was one of the first dealerships with a dyno in-house. A dynamometer? Uh-huh. Yes. So... <laughs> Whatever the horsepower your car was rated for from Chrysler, they put it on the dyno and make sure it made that horsepower. If not, well, you don't get the car till we fix it where it does make it. And two, you know, maybe a little bit more. And and especially back then, dealers typically did not have dynamometers. No. Very few people did back then. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, and uh, from there, I mean, they've got a lot of people. It's kind of like the uh, Yanko Chevrolet. Mm-hmm. Everybody That's what, want to go there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Mr. Norm is to Dodge Chrysler what Yanko was to Chevrolet. Yes, and yeah. Shelby to Ford. Right. Deal. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, uh, obviously, he saw these cars that had horsepower that may have made what the factory said it did. And then he went, hmm, let's see if we can tweak it a little bit. And I, and I think in some instances, a lot of the factory numbers might have been a little over ambitious yeah. um and i guess uh, or in some cases under ambitious <laughs> yeah. where the car was making you know 400 horsepower but they said in the book that it was only rated at 290 yeah yeah, yeah. and and then um and then uh, norm kraus and his team figured out hey you know with a little bit of uh, finesse uh, a little carb work a little ignition work um we can we can create that kind of power uh, on these cars and sell something different than what you could buy at the Dodge dealer down the street. Yeah. And, of course, uh, there was a lot of street racers back then. Oh, yeah. A lot of these guys would bring in there. No. And, yeah. <laughs> Shh. Exactly. <laughs> so, Were uh, you one of them? No, I wasn't around driving a 65, no. No? Especially not in Chicago. But around the house, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But uh, they would take and bring their car in there. And, of course, a lot of high-performance stuff that you could get from Chrysler. You know, they would order it through there, kind of like a uh, hot rod shop there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get performance parts yeah. there in both tones. So. And so they, they beefed up the factory cars. Yes. So you will go and buy a, a you know, a Coronet 500 at the dealership, and it's got what kind of motor? Were there several engines available for oh, that yeah, car? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And what does this car have? This has the 426 wedge. Okay, what, uh, what, is it, what defines the wedge? The wedge is the way they designed the the heads and the valve to the cylinder. So this is before the Hemi or at the same time as the uh, Hemi? That's probably around the Hemi because they started Hemi productions back in, uh, I guess, the second generation back in 62, 63. Got you. Because Was uh, it a Hemi available in this car? Not at the moment, no. Yeah, no. got but, it. But uh, what I understand, if you was a – good known racer or person that's connected connected that's the word you can go through the back door or something and order something a little different from chrysler it was common back then and, and mr norm was also connected because yes. some of the cars he sold and i'm assuming this was one of them mm-hmm. because the 426 wedge probably wasn't a regular production option on this that this was kind of a uh, i'll say a in the Chevy three, world, it would be yeah. a Copo, yeah. central off, uh, office production order. Um, but he had a little free form of ordering powertrain packages through Chrysler that other people didn't yes. because of his connections. Yes, that's right. And, and this would be one of those yes. cars. Yeah. And then, too, back then, a lot of your drag racers went through the dealerships in the office, back office, whatever, and ordered these special cars, you know, like they had the Max Wedge. It came with a lot more compression two fours and so forth and all a lot more horsepower let's get down to this car okay How, where did you see find this car uh actually there was a guy i work with back home that bought this car from somebody in illinois so i can't remember the guy's name um anyhow he had his plans. did he know it was a mr norm car yes yes uh-huh. he did yes there's a story from the guy before my friend that he put with it got it so, uh, and where, it, was it was this car running at the time that no, you bought it? No. It was not. It was just a, a roller. A roller. Yeah. So it had no motor. 
No motor. The motor's in pieces on the floor. Motor transmission is out. The transmission I rebuilt for him, I guess now it's probably 10 years ago, whenever he was working with me. Yeah. But it was the correct motor is, that was in yes, pieces and the yes, correct transmission. Yes, correct. That actually came in the car mm-hmm. in production, which yeah. is important. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you've completely redone the car since you bought the car. Yes, correct. From the uh, being all the way down to the frame. Yes. Yeah, it's completely... Everything's off the frame, the unibody, so forth, and yeah. everything's been completely gone through. All the bolts, everything, fasteners was documented whenever he pulled the car apart. So I got all these Ziploc bags with different car parts, nuts, bolts. Is this the first time you've ever done a restoration like that? No. No, my first one was probably about 17 years ago. I had a 67 Barracuda that I bought. And, and I drove it for two weeks and pulled it all apart and go through the whole thing complete so, so you're a mopar guy yes yes mm-hmm. well you know who he needs to meet he needs john to hovis, meet john hovis. Yeah. Yeah. Added hemi the hemi hide hide to, oh i've heard of the place you. we need to connect you i've heard the place yes. yeah. he would john love, would be in love with this car yes yeah. he would yeah and uh yeah it's right up your alley what do you do for a living i'm retired now well <laughs> okay <laughs> lucky you no no uh um, were you in the oil business no well, I was in a refinery making plastics. I worked there my last uh, 26 years. Yep. And uh, other things, I started out pushing a broom in my uncle's mechanic shop. So that's where you got the bug? That's where I got the bug. He worked for the Dodge place. and he, So that's where you got the Mopar bug. Yep. So he wound up leaving and starting his own business, and all of his customers come to him because they knew he was good. Yeah. So we worked on probably 90% of our cars were Chrysler products. How lucky are you? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, and you, you live in Sulphur, Louisiana Sulphur, now? Louisiana, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, w- wife, kids, family, all, everybody's there? Yes, basically. Yeah. Everybody there is within, you know, an hour drive. Uh-huh. But, Hollering distance, as yes. they say, uh-huh. so to speak. Yeah. So how long now has the car been restored? Yeah, it's been close to three years now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you've shown it at, at some cruise ins, and yeah. you've shown it at some car shows, but not this big. No, nothing big like this. It's just been local stuff within a you know hour or two hours or so. So to let everybody know uh, that we kind of enticed Jim to come over because we wanted to pay for the entry fee for the car to be shown and to be in competition – with others in its class. We have not seen any others in this class. And I asked somebody, have you seen it? No, I think that, uh, as far as I know, it's the only one that's in the class. That means that's a that's a trophy, my friend. So in real oh, time, oh, oh, time puts you on the map. Yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But, uh, you know, we, we, we're really proud of the car through Mars and through you that, you know, you've come over here and shared all of this with us because uh, I've never seen anything like this. It is beautiful. Thank you. And it's actually better looking than it came from the factory because I have of that era and I can tell you that cars out of any manufacturer in the United States did not look like the, that. The paint didn't look this good no. for production. Yeah. <laughs> and we had yeah. pictures of it the last show we did uh, when you were getting on, on the air with the Zoom. It doesn't justify. Those pictures don't justify this car. This car is gorgeous. Yeah, you have is. to see it in person. And it that is interior beautiful. is just, it's magnificent. It, it now, has that 60s smell to it. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> speaking of dawn and a chili dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The interior of the car, um, obviously, I mean, there are ways to do interiors. Aftermarket, there's also some available that you can actually get that were kind of like the original interior. Is that what that is? This is from Legendary. Who is Legendary? Legendary is one of the top reproductions of automotive interiors. Yeah. Gotcha. And they do a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. This is the, that's where I've been getting mine for my vehicles. And it, they do a good quality I mean, work. it looks it I mean, right out of the factory. It does. So they took all of the color swatches and everything and matched it perfectly. And yeah, no, all no. of the details, like, for instance, on the door cards, you know, yeah. back, back they don't make them like that no. today. No. But all of the intricate uh, metal work that's on. Mm-hmm. The, all and, and, all and of the folding. All of that sort of stuff. And uh, it made each interior unique to the car, whereas today you might as well just take a, you know. And you just pour it in a glass. So is this your only one? Your only 
piece of collection? or No, no. I have several other ones. I've got the 67 Barracuda. You still back. have that. I still got that one. Yeah. I can't yeah. get rid of it. My family will disown me. Right. Yeah, I've got a 68 GTS Dart. Okay. Big block. Uh, it used to be a drag car for years, and, man, it was in sad shape when I got it. But I went completely through it. Uh, I've got a 1960. Well, my wife has a 1960 Nash Metropolitan. <laughs> I just had to repaint it because some girl ran into me at the earlier this year. But uh, that's her car. I see. But, uh, it's cute little car. Uh-huh. <laughs> Interesting. And I have one more fastback Barracuda that I'm going to do for my daughter. How old is your daughter? My daughter is who? Forty, around forty, yeah. Okay. So each kid's going to get a car. So what motors in your fastback Barracuda? Uh, three hundred and sixty. It had the two hundred and seventy-three, and I just upgrade with the transmission, rear end, and, and motor, and also it's it's a good traveling car. We've made several trips in that thing, Route sixty-six with the grandkids and all. Of oh that. wow! That is a blast of a car. It sounds like a hot rod car. tour of Texas. Kind I'm just, of car. I just I yeah. just thought had that thought myself. Mm-hmm. Yep. Are you yeah. familiar with hot rod tour of Texas? No. No. Well, um, that happens at the last weekend in April, and I think that that would be something that you would really enjoy. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, we'll we'll get together. I'll give you all yeah, the information. That sounds great. It's yeah. not too far away. No, you know? it uh, usually starts in Victoria, and then heads north uh, up to Fort Worth, somewhere like that, mm-hmm. and through the Kill Country, and a couple of hundred cars. Oh, that and, sounds uh, neat. Yeah, yeah you'd it love sure it. Sure does. Yeah, yeah. it's a, a lot of good try folks. That. You know, I don't want to kind of, uh, you know, put a squash on this uh, conversation. But there's a fellow that's walking over to your left right now. His name is Larry Way, and he is with Autorama. (laughs) And he he got up early just for us, combed his hair, and came over here. And uh, Mr. Autorama. Mr. Mr. Autorama. Heavy on the Mr. Mr. Auto. So we're going to have you on whenever we get done and ready for you. But uh, at any rate, yeah. uh, okay. I wanted to let everybody know that yeah. Larry Way is in the house. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh-huh. So, um, but back to the car. Um, you trailered the car over here, and I'm glad that you did, because the road between Sulphur, Louisiana, and Houston, <laughs> Texas, ooh, terrible. It's absolutely horrible. Yeah. Yeah. But you do drive this on oh, the yes, street. Oh, yes, definitely. No, it's definitely. This isn't, yeah. this isn't he drove it in here. But it isn't a trailer queen. It's a car that, that you'll no, take. No, like you're saying, uh, some bit. of the roads you go down the interstate, it's so terrible, yeah. you know, and then a lot of people get distracted. And so, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, gives it a little bit of protection. Yeah. yeah so. He made it over here in, his, in the trailer, tra- uh, trailered by a Ram pickup truck. Of Is course. it a three-quarter ton? No, half ton. Half ton? Mm-hmm. And it did just fine. Oh, it's yeah. not that Got blue, a Hemi uh, in it? The blue single yeah. cab out here. No, no. It's a... Uh, the crew cab there. Yeah. Very good. So how long did the restoration take? Well, this one went pretty good because a friend of mine had a lot of the, the items restored, collected, like the grill had already been done, a lot of the trim. And um, so probably about a year to do it. Of course, really? I, I was able to dedicate a lot of time because I was working. Right, right. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, my first restoration, that was like three years, the Barracuda. You know, because I was working a job and, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So. We know how that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Spare time. Yeah. Yep. Spare time. That's correct. Well, we sure appreciate the car, and we appreciate you and telling us the story and getting up to come over here and talk to us two hours before the show opens. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and and you got in. Yeah. You weaseled your way in. I did. I had to tell him a story. You I believe. can only you, imagine. I had to do a little name dropping. Did you? You know? Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. You're I know okay. Don Armstrong. No, David Ainsley. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it would be Mike Mars. He, he pulls all of the uh, pulls all the switches here. Not. <laughs> he plugs them all in. He plugs them all in. <laughs> but I need a new wire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need another connector. I need something. But anyway. Well, your your car is breathtaking. Thank you. Very I much. mean, that is that is such a cool looking car. And what what's the color? What what is, what's that the is name of the medium color? Turquoise. Medium, medium turquoise. Medium turquoise. Medium turquoise. Boy, they, they went to all of this work for a beautiful car like that, and they named it Medium Turquoise. Yeah. But that's that's back in the '60s. That shade. Yeah. was relatively common across many GM. manufacturers, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. That's correct. Now, the swatches in the trunk, man, there's a stack of colors that you could get for this year. It's unbelievable. Really? Oh, yeah. There's like three turquoise. There's three blues, three reds. And uh, 
Yeah, it's a stack of colors. That it's is the same so too. The interior, you know, all the nice detail interior stuff. Imagine being have. a dealer. Well, let's see which one am I going to order from the factory yeah. today to put on the lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know that colors. They are a certain area of town may sell a lot more blue ones than they do red oh, ones. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, that's yeah. what you order. Yeah. And uh, the dealers know that. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you so much. We appreciate, appreciate you. Thanks yeah. for sharing Thanks the for car with us. Yes. Anybody that's out there listening, you need to come look at this car. We may have you back in the 11 o'clock hour because we have it wide open. So I'm here I know all that, day. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be hovering today. Yes. Like a mother. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe not a mother. Maybe a dad or yeah, something. Yeah, something an like aunt. That. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, it's the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, we have an email address. It's called info at inwheeltime.com. Jeffrey has a feature this morning. Oh. And it is on being a shade tree mechanic. That's right. Now, we've all kind of got our own idea of what that means, but Jeff is going to explain it to us. Okay, we're going to get that started here right now. And what it is... Is what it is. What it is uh, what is, it is what it is. What is the shade tree mechanic? Uh, growing up around garages, cars, car people, the term shade tree mechanic got thrown around quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to go back to this shot here, guys, because my, my camera's all messed up. Time out. Your camera is messed up? Yeah. Well, don't worry about the camera. Let's just hear about the story. Okay. A shade tree mechanic is someone who works on vehicles in a driveway, home garage. Oh, hold on, Don. My computer's messed up time out well we're, we're here move on but remember this is an audio show so i know but i'm in a commercial right now so it's messed up my bad time out talk amongst yourselves well we'll just wait for you okay because you it's know we're with that kind of that kind of show but we have an extra hour today so take your time <laughs> okay. yeah okay we how can did move the, you back to the fourth hour if uh, you'd like the fifth hour how did the phrase shade tree mechanic uh, migrate in its origination? Well, the term became popular in the 60s and 70s and quite literally referred to the mechanic working on cars in the driveway underneath the shade of a tree. This was a time when mechanics could fit almost anything on a car with basic tools in their toolbox. It seems that people are always looking for a local shade tree mechanic to work on because of their cars and high prices at the dealerships and all the other garages that uh, are around you. The fact is a shade tree mechanic uh, is a very skilled person and they have a lot of knowledge about cars. Some shade tree mechanics just work on their own vehicles or maybe do work for friends. Many, however, are skilled mechanics doing work part-time from the home for extra money. On the side, sure. Uh, on the side, yeah. Uh, the only way to find out if your local shade tree mechanic is any good Get some personal references. Talk to them about what they do to the car. You might be disappointed and regret it, but do your research. There's, there's things you can do and find out. Uh, is a shade tree mechanic trustworthy? No doubt there are some crooks in the world and rob you blind, but most people come in contact. They're car people. They're hardworking. They're honest folks just trying to do things right. How much does a shade tree mechanic charge? Well, hourly rates for a mechanic vary depending on the location as a shop or an independent but there's no way to determine what a shade tree mechanic charges so it should be less than a local repair shop anyways you can certainly make uh, a good income being a shade tree mechanic if you're good at what you do if you're going to do it as a business there's additional business expenses you got to get licenses you got to make sure if you're doing it in the neighborhood your 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 Karen association you know whether they're whether <laughs> they're allowed to do it uh, properly disposing of all the waste uh, fluids no yeah right down the drain uh, if you're a hobby shade tree mechanic working on your own vehicle or those are your friends, you probably don't need to be insured, but, you know, you take a chance, you've got to risk that. Uh, running an auto repair shop it involves other things as well. I mean, you got to pay for insurance and all that good stuff. Uh, how do you become a shade tree mechanic? Well, you just start working on cars. Find a tree. Find a tree. And if you're good at what you do and you charge a fair price, the people will come to you. Now, I've got a shade tree mechanic guy down the end of my street. Doesn't matter what it is. He could be tubbing it out and putting an LS in it. It is a bottle of rum and 40 bucks. That's all he charges me. So it's good Really? Stuff. Yeah. 
Well, see, and I always thought shade tree mechanic had something to do with a tree that had a strong enough branch that you could hang a come along oh, on yeah, it that, that's and lift it, the it, engine it, out of it. And many, I will tell you, one time we heard a story for, for months. We went up to Kirbyville out in the middle of nowhere because we heard that there was a car out there, a Hemi car out there that the guy was selling the engine out of. We got there. This Hemi, a 426 Hemi, was literally hanging in from the a come along from a tree. In from the a tree. Joshua tree. That's what they use for an A-frame to pull the motor out. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's the, you, and it was still hanging the there. It was still hanging there. It was great. We just lowered it back down in the bed of my truck, and we took it home. The story kind of well, remains the Kirby same. Bill. You have to plan to get there. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. That's not we a place you're accidentally going to go. No, no, no. It was down dirt roads. The, the story remains the same for a shade tree, no matter what it is, but the pictures are different. I mean, you could there's guys full of grease hanging from trees and all, like you said, engines, engines coming from uh, different parts. Well, there cool. You go. Yeah. Thank you, Jeffrey. There was a little technical difficulty, but it is technical. Did you, did you get it all fixed? No, but we're good. Okay. Well, are, are we going to be ready for the next time? Yes. Or is this going to be yes. an ongoing no, it's, theme it's, throughout the morning? Well, we don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> well, would you like you know, to preview it, something no. for us? Give no, it time. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah. Mars, we're out of time. we got one minute to go before we're on the air. I know. I know. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm making it. They're cooking no. something. You can smell it. What? <laughs> don't ask. What do you, I don't want to know. There's a dyslexic thing going on here, obviously. All right. Uh, Larry Way is walking around, and we're going to bring him Wait, over no, here yes. uh, at the bottom of the hour here in just a couple of minutes. And uh, we're going to have him sit in the hot seat, and he's going to talk about Autorama. Hey, the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for Inwheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream on Facebook. YouTube, and InRealTime.com, and podcasts are now available on uh, YouTube. I, I checked that out earlier today. That's kind of cool. So they're also available on over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets out there. Pick one. You can find us there. The In Real Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Houston's finest cars are invited to another Gulf Coast Auto Shield Car Social, Saturday, December 2nd, and you're invited too. Show off your personal pride and joy, or just stop in to see the likes of Lucid, Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari, and more. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your one-stop shop for paint detailing, coatings, window tent, clear bras, and wheel repair. The Car Social is your opportunity to get a tour of this state-of-the-art facility, located at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. It all takes place Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon. This is the perfect opportunity to connect with other car enthusiasts. From BMWs to Bentleys, Corvettes to McLarens, the Car Social is a different kind of show. Talk to the owners. See Gulf Coast Auto Shield's facility. You'll be amazed. Put it on your calendar now. The Gulf Coast Auto Shield Car Social, Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. The In Will Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. We'll see you then. Hey, Houston! America's greatest hot rod tradition is back! Thanksgiving weekend! The O'Reilly Auto Parts Autorama! At the George R. Brown Convention Center! Four action-packed days of hot rods, customs, classics, trucks, and performance cars! The ultimate lowrider showcase! Sponsored by Shorty's Hydraulics! See Lone Star Throwdown's texas size truck spread! And don't miss the traditional rod and custom section! Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, see wild, high-flying, freestyle motocross stunt shows! Shop the swap meet and win! Women's World all weekend on the Celebrity Stage presented by Nick's Auto Repair and Classic Car Restoration. Friday, meet AEW Tag Team Superstars, the Lucha Bros. Saturday, it's Noel G. Hector from the Fast and Furious. Sunday, it's Lou Ferrigno, the original Incredible Hulk. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Autorama. This weekend at the George R. Brown Convention Center. Discount tickets at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Part of the Summer Racing Equipment Show Car Series. See Autorama.com for more info. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. 
Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts.